And we're back with another episode of B Scar TV, and I got a very, very special guest today, Mr. Emmanuel Ogba, aka Ah, uh, the smoothest man in the business. <laughs> How you doing, man? Doing good, man. Appreciate the invite. Me and you, I feel like at, from the beginning when I first got to Miami last year, we connected pretty quickly. And we connected over a boat trip. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Over a boat trip. Yeah. And you were the first person to introduce me to the boat life yeah. here in Miami. We, it was like, what, maybe 62 feet. Yeah. You know, the, some of the boys were on there. We was just chilling. Yeah, and you was cool as a cucumber the whole yeah. way through. Like, <laughs> just okay, chill, yeah. yeah. Oh, I, got a lot. I like <laughs> this guy. Yeah, that, like, that's just my, you know, personality. I'm just kind of like just chill, you know, just easy going. Yeah. But yeah, that's how I am, though. Uh, how many how many boat trips have you been have I been so far, since yeah. I've been in Miami? Yeah. Uh, shoot. I don't know. I've been to I've been on a lot of boats. That's kind of like yeah. one of my hobbies too. I like just getting on the boat, relaxing. Even though I don't get in the water, but I like just getting on the boat. You know, just seeing the nature and all that. So. You never gotten in the water. I have, but it's like I don't <laughs> like to get in the water. <laughs> I don't like to get, water. to get in the water. <laughs> I, I have been forced to get in the water, but it's like not my, my, my best, you know, to get in the water. Like, yeah. Uh, what else do you like doing around here in Miami? Uh, sure. I like going out too, you know, with friends, you know, you know, checking out the spots. Uh, I like going out to eat. I know one of my favorite uh, Japanese spots is Makoto. Uh, it's by uh, Ball Harbor. Oh, it's real good Japanese Makoto? Spot. Oh, Makoto, yeah. Makoto. Oh, for real? Yeah. Okay, check see, I've been out. to Komodo. Yeah, try Down Makoto, here. man. Change yeah? your life. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you change your life. Um, but other than that, you know, I'm just kind of like a chill, you know. Uh, when I have people come out, come over, you know, from out of town, you know, I take them out too. So, yeah. but other than that, I'm usually chilling at the crib, you know, just either watching a movie or just playing games. So. Laying low? Yeah, laying low. Yeah, yeah nah, Miami is... Uh, there's a lot going on yeah. out here. Yeah. I love like being able to be on the water. Yeah. All the food oh, yeah. is amazing. Like any cuisine that mm -hmm. you want, you yeah. can find it here in Miami. Exactly. And it is the most authentic mm -hmm. of cuisines. Mm -hmm. Like when you go to an Italian restaurant, yeah. very heavy, thick Italian yeah. accents will be taking your order. Mm -hmm. You know, and they <laughs> whipping it up in, in yeah. the back. The, the finest pastas, the Cuban food. Yeah. Um, obviously, all the like the Latin food out here is yeah. fire. But even like the, you know, the sushi, like you said, the Japanese spots yeah. are really good too. Mm -hmm. Cause Komodo, that's that's my joint. It is. It's. I don't know. I'm not a real big fan of Komodo. It's yeah. Like, I think I tried duck for the first time there, and it wasn't what I thought it was. And the lettuce wrap. Yeah. You didn't I, like the lettuce wrap. Ducks. I didn't. I didn't like it. Miami is its own market, its yeah. own place. It's different for anybody who comes here, but for you, yeah, different than your last two stops yeah. in the league, mm -hmm. and also much different than where you come from too. Yeah. Can you uh, kind of lay out, just lay out your journey, your timeline from, from way back, from way Baby back? <laughs> oh, I moved to the United States with my family when I was nine years old. Uh, my dad just wanted a better life for his kids, and it was kind of a lot of corruption back in Nigeria, so that was one of the reasons that made him want to move. Um, grew up in Houston, uh, spent a lot of my time there. Went to school in well, Oklahoma State. Mm. Uh, that was a kind of a big decision for me because I was happy because my dad didn't have to pay for my college because mm. I, I had a full ride there. Uh, and, and one of the reasons why I did go to Oklahoma State was because um, an office alignment that went to my high school he also went to Oklahoma State. He got drafted eighth overall. Yeah, Russell Okun. Okun. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, he went to your high school? Yeah, he from my high right, school. Okay. So I was like, I want to be like that, you know. Yeah. I want to get drafted high, you know. I want to take care of, you know, everybody. So I get drafted by Cleveland. Uh, what, second second round pick? First pick in the second round? Uh, it, was, it, was, it was a journey for me because was, I was still new to that lifestyle, you know, new to being in the league. Like everybody expect you like to be great, especially because you drafted high. But that's when I hit my low when I got traded to Kansas City. Bring it to Kansas City. Um, you know, your whole life you've been told like you're really good, you're the best, you're always being the best. And now once you get traded, it's like oh you got to start over from from the bottom. It taught me a lot that season. You know, going to that season, I had a mindset. It's like I don't, I don't, I don't care. I'm gonna show them like I'm worth it. Pretty much that was my mindset going into the season. 
And all of a sudden, that was a Super Bowl run. Mm. But all of a sudden, like 10th, 10th game of the season, boom, tore my pack. After I having a stellar year, I tore my pack. Uh, it, was, it, was, it was tough for me because I've never, I've had injuries before, but I've never had one when I was balling like that hard. Right, like right. I, had, I had a goal in my mind, I had a goal. But I tore my peg, got hurt. Um, I called my mom, I called my dad actually. I was like, why, like why now? My dad started actually crying cause I was like, dad, don't cry, it's, it's okay. Uh, it's, just, it's just everything happened for a reason, you know? Took the grand assault, you know, we ended up going to the Super Bowl day. Unfortunately, I didn't get to play. Um, but um, after that, then I signed with Miami during the off season. Miami has always been my home, well, my second home because oh, I trained yeah. during the combine here. Oh, okay. So I'm kind of like used to the environment, used to the people, and also my agent lives here too. So uh, so signed with Miami, and and I, my career kind of like took off after that. It took off. <laughs> it, took, <laughs> it took off. It took it off, took man. Off hey, sure. that watch is shivering now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nah, nah, it for sure did, and it, it taught me a lot. You know, it brought me closer to my teammates. Yeah. And you know, when you've gone through something, and then you realize what it took to, for you to get to the position you're in, you're just more appreciative of you know the people around you and the people that helped you get to where you need to be. Yeah. So, nah, yeah. for sure. Rewinding all the way back to yeah. you know your family and yeah. being in Nigeria and mm -hmm. wanting to come to the US for yeah. a better opportunity yeah. you know for you yeah. and then you know seeing where you've come now mm -hmm. 20 some years later yeah. right after the, your father and your family made that that's decision yeah. you know and that's like the fruits of their labor, labor. and everything mm -hmm. is, you know, exactly. with you, you yeah. know, and it's, it's manifested itself. It's just, it's just, just, I'm just thankful, you know, for it all because yeah. watching my dad struggle, you know, in Nigeria, we weren't in a bad situation. We weren't in a terrible situation, but then again, coming here, my dad had to like kind of like start over, you know, I uh, had to get like a security job, you know, I had to right. start from scratch, uh, work in a pipeline for Exxon Mobil. Just see him wake up and drive two hours every day to work and two hours back. It just made me say, nah, I can't let you do this forever. So, you know, it just inspire me to just to work hard. You know, even though, even though stuff is hard, even though when times get hard, I just think about my dad like, hey, he didn't care. He had family to feed. He would mm. wake up tired, hungry. He would still go to work, you know, go to work, food on the table for his whole family. You know, that just made me, you know, want to work 10 times hard just to take care of him. It's funny, uh, a lot of my Nigerian homies yeah. are, it seems like, have a similar kind of family yeah. structure. Yeah. Very disciplined, mm -hmm. hardworking, focused on education, yeah. just like <laughs> put your work in, exactly. play later. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? And it, I think it's probably been a little bit of a product of where I've, I've been, right? Like yeah. in university and mm -hmm. in the NFL, yeah. right? But it seems, for me, it seems like Nigerian culture is like very motivated and mm -hmm. driven. And um, I haven't, you know, it's crazy. I actually haven't had Nigerian food before. What? How you have Nigerian homes that never had Nigerian food? I've never had the jollof rice. Jollof rice, come on now, you sleeping? I'm, I'm, I'm bringing you some jollof rice. I'm bringing you some jollof rice. You gotta, rice. You gotta, you gotta try. I got you. I got you. Make sure I'm and correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. There's three like main, main. tribes, mm -hmm. right? With yeah. Ebo, Yoruba, yeah. Ausa. And what was the last one? Ausa. Ausa. I know. Ausa. I don't really ever meet Ausa. Yeah, it's kind of like they're rare, you know. Um, but uh, yeah, it's three main languages, it's, uh, three main tribes. It's Igbo, Yoruba, and Aosa. And I'm an Igbo tribe. I'm from the Igbo tribe. So, yeah. Yeah. So our dialect is kind of similar. It just depends where you go to, but it's pretty much similar. You know, mm. all Igbo tribes. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. So when you, when you see or meet another Igbo yeah. cat, is it like, yo, like we, we cool? <laughs> so here's the, I can usually tell what tribe they're in, either they're Igbo or Yoruba. Aosa is hard to tell. But I usually could tell if it's their Igbo or How can you just tell? by the last name. Oh, word. Yeah, just by the last name. Like, my last name is unique, though, because some people might think I'm Yoruba because my last name, how it starts off. But I'm actually, I'm Igbo. So it throws, okay. my last name throws other people off. For real? Yeah. So what do you mean? How, like, give me some examples of like. So like, uh, Arinze is like an Igbo. It's an Igbo name. Um, 
like Sam Iguavan is close to Yoruba. It's a Yoruba name. It's most more more Yoruba name. Uh. But uh, but yeah, it's just uh, it's based on a last name. Okay. You could tell. Well, I could use that right. you know, to tell because you because you know part of the language. Is not that why? not necessarily. It's just I can know, I can spot them. <laughs> yeah. And Ebos are more kind of like lighter. I would say more lighter. Than, oh, really? Than Yorubas too. Oh, okay. Naturally, so. Is there a difference like like a body type? I mean, can you we, tell? Uh, body type? Nah, you can't really tell nah. body type. But uh, but Ebos are usually like more like tone and ready. I'm I'm talking. <laughs> <laughs> but but, nah, nah. Nah, but uh, nah, you can't really tell by the body type. Okay. But, yeah. Yeah, because one of my homies told me his last uh, name is Lapite. Oh, Lapite. Oh, man. See, now that was hard too. That sounds like more Yoruba, so, though. So, Lapite, Shitu, uh, um, Agu. Agu. Oh, that's Igbo. Agu is Igbo. Yeah. And yeah. so, that's my homie Ted. Yeah. May he rest in peace. He passed away when we were, uh, when we were at Cal. Yeah. And so, it's funny because me and my homie Isaac Lapite was just recently talking about yeah. about this uh i think it probably stemmed from this same conversation yeah because isaac just recently graduated med school mm -hmm. and started off his residency oh yeah that's uh, awesome, at ohsu yeah super successful dude but like very driven mm -hmm. you know locks in yeah immediately mm -hmm. to whatever he's doing um and we were talking about ted and ted is a he was a bigger cat yeah he was like yeah ted was ebo because yeah. a, lot, a lot of ebo cats are like can be bigger. built a little bigger yeah you know, I think uh, Isaac is Uruguay, and that dude is like he's chopped up. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like yeah. it don't matter it's what. Hard, he, yeah, it's just Nigeria genes. Bro, it you. don't matter what he eat, how he trains, he gonna be chopped <laughs> totally, up, bro. Yeah. He just has it. But now it's cool. It's cool to hear about the yeah. you know the culture and to see where you've uh, where your family is, has come and, yeah. and all that is. It's inspiring, an inspiring story. Oh yeah, no, no, for sure. I always tell my dad, it's like, when I'm done, I gotta write a book, you know? I gotta write a book about my whole journey. I know it's a, it's a lot that happened, you know? So, like, when I was born, like, I wasn't really crying, you know? So the doctor was doing everything they can just to get me to cry. But I was not crying, I was just mute. And then all of a sudden, my mom started praying, 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 and all of a sudden, phew, I started crying out of nowhere, and that's why my mom named me Ike Chuku. Yeah, so that means like God's power. So God's power got me, you know. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Ike Chuku. Ike Chuku. That's my Nigerian name. Oh, word. Yeah. To be honest, so my first name is really Ike Chuku, but we switch it to Emmanuel, so we can just to help. Yeah, because you know? you're an American. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> so most people easier. know how to say it. Yeah. So, yeah. so that's just, like, straight convenience. Yeah, it's like, oh, Emmanuel. Oh, okay, I can do that. Yeah. So, yeah, so but my family calls me Ike Chuku, yeah. We had E Rob on here uh, on the, the show yeah. recently, and. He's also from Houston. Yeah. And you're not from Houston, but E Rob's from yeah. Houston. You grew, grew up, up there. In Houston, yeah. And then you were also then you were in Kansas City, you're in Cleveland. Very like football spots. Spots. Yeah. <laughs> At what point in your cause you, you were twelve when you got to Texas. Oh nine, nine, nine. Or you were nine yeah. when you got to you were nine when you got to Texas. Yeah. At what point did you find football? Uh so funny story, I didn't really want to play football at first. But um, I started playing basketball, and then my, uh, I saw my friends playing the game. This was in middle school. I was like, oh, that looks fun. I was like, I don't know, let me just try it. I started playing, and it was like, yeah, it's fun. It's fun and all. And then I start, and started liking the game, liking the game. My mom was like, oh, man. Because you're like, oh, no, I don't want you playing the game. Right. It's too dangerous. It's too violent. I was like, Ma, it's like, it's too late. I, I, I love it now. She's like, I like playing, I enjoy playing it, especially with my friends. And so she was like, I want you to promise me this. Like, you're good grace, and I'll let you keep playing. I was like, I, that's it? That's all? That's it? <laughs> all right, cool. <laughs> I can do that. So, you know, that's kind of like how it all started in, in middle school. A lot of people say, oh, you started kind of late, you know, because some people start like in Little mm -hmm. League and all that. But I feel like I'm... I'm thankful I started in middle school because I feel like that was kind of like the best time for me, yeah, me yeah. to start, you know. Yeah. Boost my career more years. So. <laughs> you was always a big kid? No, nah, not really. Yeah. I was actually the little scrawny one, but I always had really long arms. Right. So I knew I was going to go into it, but when, I didn't know. 
So I didn't really hit my growth spurt to like my junior year of high school. Oh, really? Yeah, that's when I hit Damn, it. that's nuts. Yeah, so I just, I got tall out of nowhere. My coach was like, what'd you do this summer? <laughs> I was like, she was just eating. <laughs> you know? yeah. But yeah, that's kind of like when I grew into my frame and all of a sudden I started like eating. Uh, I started getting offers because I started like making plays. And um, and actually it didn't really come till one game I went off. I had two defensive touchdowns that game. It was against Willow Ridge. I can remember I caught a pick six and from recovered for a touchdown. So my name got on the paper. As soon as it got on the paper, then for some reason I was just started eating every game. And all of a sudden I started getting like schools come looking at me. And I was like, okay, this is a chance for me, you know, to get that full ride, make sure my right. pops don't gotta pay for nothing. And I just took that and just kept on, you know, mm. playing and dominating. And Oklahoma State came and offered me. I was in between, I was trying to decide between University of Houston because University of Houston is close to home. Yeah, and yeah, that's home. right there. But then again, I feel like if I went to University of Houston, I wouldn't be able to grow up. You know what I'm saying? Because I know right. too many people in Houston and right. my family is there. It's like, I kind of need to get at least a little bit away. Which, not too far. Yeah, not too far. <laughs> not too, not far. too far. Just, yeah. just a little distance, you know, just to kind of let you grow up on my own. Because I've always been a loner, but then again, I've never lived by myself. Right, so, right, right. So that's kind of one reason why I did to go to yeah. State too. When you uh, in high school, did you still play defensive end? Have you always been yeah, a defensive I've end? Yeah, I've always played defensive end. I actually played backup quarterback in like middle school, a little bit. But I had an arm. It's weird. I had an arm on me, so I was just caught back and just throw the ball. But, um, but I did that a little bit, but it obviously wasn't wasn't my thing. You got to tell McDaniel about that, bro. <laughs> right. <laughs> you might be able to do right, something with that. Right, I should. <laughs> it's kind of surprising, too, that you left Houston and ended up at Oklahoma Ooh, State. Yeah. I, I feel like a lot of Texas recruits ended up Stay. staying in Texas. Yeah. So actually, so my dream school was UT. UT? UT. Right. The Longhorns. Um, they were nice, Yeah, they were, they were really nice. <laughs> So, so the reason I wanted to go there, because obviously it's in Texas, and uh-huh. they were really nice. They had a really good football team. I went on my junior visit. I had a junior visit there. Yeah. So I was thinking, I used to rock the hoodies and all that. I was thinking I was going to get an offer. But, uh, but nah. They never blessed they never you with came. the offer. That's crazy. <laughs> they never, never came. So, you know, every time, you know, we play the, the uh, uh, Houston Tech, I mean, uh, Long UT, long, yeah. I always like go crazy in that game because I was, it's like I was like a grudge match. I was always mad when we play. I was like, right. man, y'all could have offered me. <laughs> what y'all did. So Bro, I, I feel like Texas was stingy. University of Texas was stingy with their offers. Oh, yeah, most definitely. They used to be at least. Well, nah, most definitely they were. Like crazy. I remember, I remember getting letters mm. from University of Texas yeah. and University of Florida. You yeah. know, I'm all the way up in Portland. Yeah. But when I got those two letters, I was like, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And I think I only got like one or two during the whole time, yeah. you know, and they never heard it, like no offer, nothing, but they, they sent like one little letter to Yeah. Me. It's funny though, because now that I'm thinking about that, and like University of Florida, University of Texas, they sent maybe one or two letters, yeah. but University of Alabama, yeah. bro, used to send the, these big <laughs> ass packets. Yeah. I used to probably get one every day, bro. Yeah, yeah it was like, it was like this, this big like packet, like the size of like a peachy type. Yeah. And they would, you know, it'd open up and they had the paper in it and whatever it would say. Yeah. But on the front of the packet, it was, <clears throat> I think at the time it was like, it was Julio Jones. Yeah. And he was like in like a receiver stance, like arms hanging with the gloves. Yeah. Bro, yeah. I used to get that shit in the class all the time. Uh, you know, and everybody's looking, oh my God. Oh, he got the offer. <laughs> <laughs> Never got the Never offer. Got but, the I, offer. <laughs> but I got all type of packets though. Yeah. So my head coach pulled up, Oklahoma State head coach pulled up in the, in the limo. Go see me. That's what I knew. I was like, oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah. Oh, he flexed for he you. Flexed. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, man, y'all went to the office. Okay. Wow. <laughs> Class. Nah, that was, that was, that was, that was dope. No, was, you know, for him to do that. For young high school kids now, yeah. as they think about choosing a, a school to, to go to a, a place to spend the next four or five years, three, four or five years yeah. of their lives. What uh, what advice do you have for for those kids? All right, so with the new rules about the pain of kids, it's crazy now. It changes a little it bit. It changes a little bit. But my one objection to that is um, I understand they're getting paid now. Some of them don't realize you still got to put in the work. You get what I'm saying? It's like it's hard to make it, too. 
you know, and also as soon as adversity hit, they want to transfer, they want to go somewhere else. I'm like, sometimes you just gotta like put in the work and sometimes your coach don't play you just to teach you a lesson like, hey, like get on your stuff, get in your playbook, you know, you know, do the extra, you know, weight room, do the extra little things you can do just to help yourself grow as a player. But it's like, if you could easily just transfer anywhere now, it's like they yeah. don't, they don't want to like put in the work. But my advice is just to like, just stay the course and just be disciplined, you know. You know what you came here to do, you know, you came here to ball out, obviously get your education too, but you got to take everything serious and not just, as soon as just one, uh, adversity hits, you now you want to transfer. Nah, it's not, you don't got to do that. Just kind of stay down, keep your head down, and just go to work. So important to stay the course. Yeah, just stay, you know. <laughs> when adversity hits, uh -huh. when stay. you got to easy out, it's so, <clears throat> it's human nature to look just for the, boom, the path of least resistance. Exactly. So, I mean, it's just, just stay there and just like, just, do your part, you know, control what you can. You know, right. That's, that's all you can do. I want to pivot back to yeah. when you were talking about wanting to write a book. Yeah. Is that is that a serious thing? Yes, it's definitely serious. Um, I've definitely had talks with my pops about it, too. And he's also want to write a book about his life, too. But, uh, you know, I've, I've been through a lot. And also I have a, one of my best friends from high school. Uh, middle school too, in high school. Um, he's kind of followed my journey, so he kind of like knows my background, kind of like knows my story too. So I'll use him, you know, just to help me out too, and also my other friends too, just to, uh, you know, sometimes I forget <laughs> some yeah, stuff, you yeah. know, but you need that, you know, the, the, the people in your corner that have been there, you know, the whole time, so they kind of like remember to what you went through, even though you kind of lose memory on that. Yeah, yeah. no, nah, for real. Yeah. There's so much that's happened. Exactly. Like if, if, I was to try to write a book, I would have to go and ask so many people exactly. like just to help me recollect, <laughs> yeah. you know, the past. Yeah, like like what happened? Remember that one time? What happened there? Oh yeah, I remember. Oh, such and such happened, see? Like just to have the, that person in your background, you know, just to kind of just help guide you through it too, you know, just help you remember it too. So yeah. Like, do you do good. any writing today? Like to, right like right now in your right life? Right now? Oh no, nah, see I, I don't do much writing. The only writing I do is just like my goals, you know, for the yeah, season, yeah, right? Yeah. You know, or what I need to accomplish or what I need to get done. So that's kinda like what I kinda jot it down. It yeah. Come to my head. Yeah. yeah. I've uh I actually, I, I love to write. It's yeah. like some when I was, since I was little, like yeah. that was some, one of my favorite subjects in school, mm -hmm. like creative writing. writing and, okay. Yeah, language arts and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, and so I've, I've kept like a loose journal yeah. over my years. All right. Like in ever, whenever I'm, a lot of times it'd be when I'm on a plane. Okay. You know, I, I think do, that's the best time, you no know. No Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. I'll just whip out the laptop, open up the Word doc, right. and just start writing. Yeah. Just around like, you know, how I'm feeling right now, yeah. what's happened over the past couple months. Okay. I remember especially like my rookie year, I was pretty adamant about, it was like, my when I transferred from Cal to Stanford, yeah, I was writing about just kind of the process. Yeah. And then my rookie year, mm -hmm. I was writing like every couple months, and I was on injured reserve and yeah. all this and all this kind of like the pressures I was yeah. feeling. I was just like accounting them. Mm -hmm. It's like damn, like this is a. You know, I didn't know how long I was gonna be in the league. Like yeah. I want to make sure I remember all of this. Exactly. You know, when you uh, you talk about your goals yeah. and writing down your goals, yeah. what are uh, what are some of your goals for? this upcoming season, uh, what do you hope to accomplish? Oh, so I don't like to put numbers out there, you know, yeah. obviously, uh, but obviously be the best teammate, be the best support I can be, you know, um, just kind of like just dominate, you know, help guys around me, you know, eat too. Uh, you just want to make my family proud. That's one of my mm. top goals, just make my family proud, retire my parents. Keep putting that extra work in, you know? Right. Like, you know, sometimes when you, you're kind of good, you, you tend to be like, okay, I could chill, right? but nah, you can never be satisfied, you know? Mm. Don't be satisfied, you're a champion. Like, I, I tell myself, I'm a champion. Look, every time I wake up, I say, I'm a champion, I'm a champion, I'm a champion. I'm gonna work like a champion. I'm gonna work like a champion. <laughs> you know, mm. just some things I just tell myself, you know, to get me up, or you've been through this before, go do it again, go do it again. Those are like Dang. my goals, yeah. That's deep. Yeah, I know. I'm a champion. Yeah. I like that, bro. I'm a champion, yeah. There's the work yeah. part. 
right. But it's also <laughs> to enjoy the spoils. Enjoy the spoils. The spoils of that, of that, that right. contract. Yeah. You know, this, this off season, have you done any traveling? Uh, this off season, I got a chance to take my parents to Israel. Yeah, I went to Israel oh, wow. uh, visit Jerusalem. I did it because of my parents, really, because my dad's a pastor also. Um, and, and it kind of meant a lot to him, you know, to see the Holy Land, so Jesus' tomb, and, you know, it's just kind of like, just to reflect on spiritual, you know. He had an amazing time there. Uh, my mom had an amazing time. They took lots of pictures, you know, brought a lot of souvenirs <laughs> back. Yeah. Um, but just hearing my parents just say, thank you so much, like, they, that's the most thank you I've gotten ever, you know, that whole week. Because it was like, they were just so grateful, you know, because they didn't never expect it to, you know, do something like my didn't my dad never expected to go to Israel like like right. come on go to Israel, but I told him I was like I want to take you guys to Israel and um, went to Israel we had a, an amazing time there. Um, you gotta take more trips though, especially with me and my parents. I like that because that was the first time just me and my parents That's took cool. a trip, so I got for sure uh, take more trips with them. Also, I went to Colombia. Colombia was real cool. Okay, it's awesome. You got a Medellin? Now into Cartagena. Oh, Catana, okay. yeah, it's more of the Afro side. Yeah. Yeah, so it's like, it was really hot. It was hot, real hot. But, you know, going to uh, third world countries like that, it just makes you appreciate where you are yeah. even more. Right. Because, you know, people are way less fortunate than you, and you just kind of like, hey, like, they're busting their tail off just to get just a little bit. And, like, we living in the land of the free, right? Mm -hmm. But, um, but it's just, it's just a cool experience, a humbling experience, you know, when you see all those sites. Yeah, you know? yeah. When you travel to you know, places like Colombia or Israel, is there, is there one thing that you like to, to do, like yeah. when, you're, when you're out in different yeah. lands? Like how do you kind of like huh. lean into the, your experience? Uh, I tried the food, you know, I try to food. try different yeah, foods, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. just to, yeah. to see the differences um, in my food and their, their food. And also I like to see like the... Um, you know, the sites, you know, check out the sites that I go with my boys. I just we go check out the different sites, you know, yeah. you know, we could party sometimes to at night time. But no uh, we kind of like just enjoy the city and just enjoy the locals, you know, kind of yeah. like talk to them, too. You know, yeah. See how they're doing, even though I can't speak Spanish, but, you know, I try to understand <laughs> the Google Translator. You yeah, know? right. So You got to get your Spanish up. Yeah, man. I know. I know. I've been saying that. I, I got to start reading. I think I. I I ordered a book for dummy, uh, Spanish for dummies, <laughs> just to, just to further my Spanish education. Yeah. But uh, how but far yeah. into, into uh, that book? Not, you get? Too, not too far. The cover. Because I'm, <laughs> I'm still struggling with it, so yeah, not too far. Google Translate helps out. Right, right. Though. You almost don't need that shit. Yeah. <laughs> shit, you speak right into it. Exactly. And spit it out. Exactly. Yeah. So. But nah, but that's, 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 that's pretty much it. That's bro. cool. Yeah. I think the food for sure, traveling, yeah, like tasting the food, eating the food, seeing mm -hmm. how it's prepared, mm -hmm. you know, the different like proteins, the different spices, yeah. you know, that and how, just how it all comes together. Mm -hmm. I, I like, I like that. I also like going to, um, I also like going to museums. Okay. Yeah. I like to learn about the history of the place that I'm traveling, okay, yeah. which this is like, it's funny, like these commercials you see, like you're turning into your parents. Yeah. Like it's totally like some shit that my dad, <laughs> dad would be doing, doing. like, That's you know, doing. but like, I want to know. So, um, here at B-Scar TV, we always ask about music, love music. So I'm curious, what is your go-to karaoke song? Is it weird? I don't really do karaoke. That's not weird. But there's one song that you sing when it comes on. Damn, do I really gotta say it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 say it. Oh. Do you have it in your mind? I like J. Cole, right? Dang, hold on one second. I got a camera on my phone? You can bring out your phone. I can bring out my phone. It's, it's, it's a tough, it's, it's a tough, tough question. It's like, it's if tough. If you don't do karaoke, it's a tough question. Yeah, it's tough. It's like, I got, I got mine. Yeah, what's yours? Nice and slow. Nice and slow. Oh, okay, sure. nice yeah. and slow, yeah. Uh, Seven o'clock, gonna die. I'm in my drop top, cruising the streets. Pretty little thing that's waiting for me. me. I pull love, anticipating. Good love. Good love. Uh, Keep me waiting. 
What's that? What's that? All right, it's called Lost Ones. You heard of Lost Ones? Lost Ones. Yeah, by J. Cole. Have you had any encounters with musicians? If so, what's your most interesting encounter with a musician? Actually, I met uh, Mario. Was it Mario? Yeah, I met Mario. Like, let me love you? Yeah, <laughs> I, I met Mario uh, on a plane. So he was, he was really like, we're sitting right next to each other, right? You know, like on the other world, he was sitting on the other world. Right. So it was like, it was like, it, I was in between wanting to be like, yo, what's up, Mario? Like, and then I just wanted him to like do him, like, you know, not kind of like create a whole yeah, scene right. where everybody was like, oh, that is Mario. So, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> I think you might have been the only one on that plane who knew who Mario I'm was. Probably, probably. <laughs> you was probably the only I'm person probably, probably, cause it's Everybody else Mario. was like, who the hell is he taking a picture mm, Man, that's, man, I don't know. Mario used to be like that dude. He was like, like that. Yeah, yeah. That's another another great karaoke song, Let Me Love You. Let you said let me love you. Let me be the one to give you air. Nah, that's my shit. Yeah, too, that's, a, that's a go-to karaoke yeah. song for sure. What's the, the best concert you've ever been to? What's crazy, I haven't been to a lot of concerts. I haven't been to a lot of concerts. You've been to one now? Yeah, yeah, I have. I went to a 2 Chainz concert. And, uh, okay. When I was in Cleveland, my rookie, I went to a 2 Chainz concert. And that was pretty lit. Yeah, 2 it was, Chainz? It was, it was getting lit. So I went backstage to meet him too. Oh yeah? Yeah, it was it was smooth. Oh, that's cool. Love, yeah. I feel like 2 Chainz is a cool guy. Yeah, yeah. He comes he, across. Yeah, he was chill. He was chill. It's kind of like, oh, the Browns, huh? You know, he was just Right, 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 right. Like, yeah, yeah talking yeah, some Browns. shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Browns. If you were to put an album out, what would you call it? I would call it My Life. Mm. I said my life because I think the songs would just be basically about my life. <laughs> <laughs> What's one song on your pregame playlist that people might think is a little weird? <sighs> might be weird? <laughs> okay, maybe not on your pregame playlist. Yeah. What's one song or artist that you vibe with that people might not expect? Mario. <laughs> <laughs> but people are vibing Mario. Yeah, nah, yeah. Nah, Mario's nah. It's like a classic. Mario's a classic. Yeah, it's a sure. classic. Yeah. You got drip, bro. I'll give it to you. Thank you. you thank can, you. Thank you can dress yourself. Thank do you. Do you dress yourself? Or you so got a stylist? I do have a stylist, but I do put my stuff together too as well. But it helps having a guy that can find you, you know, your right, you know, size of clothing and you know, because it's hard to find you yeah. know, clothes outside, you know, for big yeah. guys. But I have a guy that helps me, you know. Uh, Helps you find the clothes. Yeah. Does he lay him out on the bed for you? He don't lay him out on the bed, <laughs> but I do call him and you know, hey, yeah. this and this work. Or I'll say, oh, I think this and this work. And I'll ask him, like, what do you think? So, I don't mind that. Yeah. I don't mind that. Yeah. You got like a support staff. <laughs> yeah, I, I got support staff. <laughs> you got support really. staff yeah. for your drip. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Who you think is, uh, who's some of the best dressed guys on the team? Other than myself. Um, oh, you, you, top. You <laughs> say, say you, top. Um, Solomon be putting some, some stuff together. I would say Solomon, Solomon be putting some. Oh, yeah? He be putting some fists together. Okay, okay. yeah. Probably not shout all the time. To the, shout, shout out to the big guys. guys. We yeah, like that, yeah. He be putting some fists together. X, but you know, X, X, X Lotus, so you know, you yeah. can throw on that. Yeah, X, X dresses <laughs> well. X. You don't uh, have to include me in the Yeah, list. and, and, and a dude named Scarlet. Brent, Brent Don't Scarlet. Worry about yeah, a dude named Scarlet too. He dresses dresses well too. Oh, okay. He's up there too with me. Thank you. Yeah. Stop. <laughs> no, all right, keep going. Keep going. And there you have it. <laughs> Mr. Emmanuel Ogba Og. I appreciate you coming on the show, man. Uh, great to learn more about you and mm -hmm. excited for this upcoming season. Yeah. Watch us dominate uh -huh. and do the thing. I appreciate you, bro. Appreciate it. Thanks for yes, having sir. me, dog. Yes, <laughs> Yo. And that's another episode of B-Scar TV. Leave a comment, some constructive criticism, feedback. We need a feedback loop. We're trying to improve and get better. But we'll see y'all next time.